a question um, about were there any storylines I was uncomfortable with? And we'll, uh, we'll address for a second the kind of underlying uh, question that I guess a lot of people would seeing that question feel, which is, did any of the things you had to do portraying being gay make you uncomfortable? I kind of addressed that in the first sex scene video, and I'll deal with some of those other things in there. So watch those, and you'll see more of that. The other thing is, is um, the the quick answer to that is no. It, none of the issues that I had to deal with was my own comfort level about sexuality. I'm very comfortable in my sexuality, um, so much so that I was able to do the show, and I believe that it. I'm fighting for gay people to be as open as they want to be and and it to be as safe as possible for people to be honest about their sexuality. It makes no sense for me to not be honest about mine. So, you know, I, I'm comfortable on all fronts. Um, so none of the portraying a gay character ever bugged me. Ever, ever, ever. Didn't. And, and and we'll deal with the other question of, you know, certain people have that is gay contagious. Can you turn gay or whatever? That'll be in another video, too, which is hilarious. I get that one all the time. Um, but discomfort with storyline. There was one. And it was major. And it was crucial, I thought, to my character. And on most circumstances... Um, I would never question the the writing or creativity of Ron and Dan, our executives, or the writers themselves um, who came up with these storylines. But there was one element, and it was a big one, where, and it was hard because I'm straight. It was difficult to bring it up because, quite frankly, how am I to tell um, five gay men who are writing a show about gay men, the first of its kind, as honestly as they can, that the storyline they're writing about my gay character is wrong or can't go that way. And that's a tough one because I have tremendous respect for them. And you get one, these guys get one shot to tell their story and I'm going to tell them to change it a little bit. It just seemed weird. You know, it felt like, you know, it, yeah, it was, it, it, I didn't want it to become my Matt Damon moment in that regard, if you know what I mean. So it was tough. That was the hardest part. You know, there was an element of how dare I. But I felt so strongly about it, I had to bring it up. And that was, they wanted Michael to come out of the closet season two. They wanted something to happen midway through the Ben relationship, and that'd be that. And I went to them, and I said, because I think they were tired of, it was like post-Tracy storyline, and they, and I, I had always fought for there to be more straight allies on the show, um, I, I, I had a problem with one of the lines in the script at being a philosophy as opposed to just a character's point of view, which was, uh, there are only two types of straight people, the ones that hate you to your face and the one that hate you to your back. I obviously, as a straight man, had a real problem with that. Um, I don't mind it as Brian's philosophy, but if it was meant to be the philosophy of the show, which is where it was leaning at one point, um, I had a real problem with that because that's like, it's just calling me a liar. It's calling me a hateful thing. And I was there to help. I felt like a true ally. But then I was shown the door with that statement. And that, that, I had to talk to Ron and Dan about that. Specifically. Because I literally came up afterwards. There's just this line. There's only two types of straight people. Those that hate you to your face and those that hate you to your back. And I had to walk up to them and go, which one am I? Tell me which one you think I am. Because if I'm going to try to care about this character you know, and express to you how much I care about this character, is that, is what I'm saying going to be taken in the context of you think I'm somebody who's hating you behind your back? That's a rough one. So then you come to, here's the major storyline aspect, and I, I really have an issue with it. To the point where I was like, I don't know if I can show up for work if you're going to do that. Because I think it's too important for the audience. And that was... They wanted Michael to come out. And my basic argument was, if we do that, all the characters are out. And I know too many gay people in parts of the country where it's not safe to be out. And who, what character on the show then speaks for them? It's just, then it becomes a cartoon exaggeration, like a, you know, a fantasy. Which is, if it's that kind of show, it's that kind of show where the characters 
it doesn't, you know, it's not really meant to be representative. It's meant to be presentational, a, a one possible future where you get to win. I'm totally for that, the happy ending version. But that's not what we had kind of set out to do, and I don't think that's what they meant to do. And, um, I think it was just story fatigue. And so I, I, uh, I said it's, I find it wrong. I think it's wrong. I think Michael should stay in the closet. I think she, he should continue to hold out. If he's held out this long, he's 30-something, and he's not come out even in the context of, again, his mom and his best friend are the most supportive gay people in the world. Why wouldn't he be out now? And why would this... What major event will turn him around. And ultimately, it worked out because it was the major event. It was almost dying that did it. And in the most public way possible. So it worked. That was that was a good thing. And I think it was good for the storyline and all that. But the, that was the most difficult thing, was trying to bring up that note to the execs in a respectful way as a straight man playing a gay character to gay men writing a story about, you know, that the portrayed something they wanted to say. So, I mean, that's a, that's a tough position to be in, you know. Um, but I cared about the character and I cared about the storyline and I cared about the audience enough that I was like, I, I, I have to speak my piece on this. And you can disagree. Obviously, ultimately, if they'd overridden it, something else would have happened. I don't know. But that was the only thing that really made me uncomfortable was the idea that they wanted to do that. So there you go. That's the answer. Um, do you, uh, and, you know, was there any storylines that made you uncomfortable? That was it. Um, so anyways... Like, subscribe, um, the subscribe button's down there or whatever. There, I've got a bunch of these other videos and I'm making them all the time. I'm also going to make um, stuff. If you have any other questions about other stuff, other shows, what have you, you can always leave them in the comment section. I'm glad to answer them as well. Um, I'll be doing some Lab Rats ones and I'll be doing some uh, ones about just kind of uh, about stand-up and, and the like and music. Um, but specifically, if you have any questions about Queer Folk, it always bugged you. I've done some of them in interviews, but they, they kind of get truncated. So I'd rather give these like fuller easy to explain, easy to digest versions of it. And if you need any clarification, I'm glad to do that too. So there you go. Uh, take care of yourself and take care of somebody else and uh, just click the subscribe button and, and ask your questions in the comments below. All right, cheers.